You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Haney. And you know I'm happy to have you here with me today on March 1st. Can you believe that it's already March? Time continues to fly. It just... It does, and I think that time seems to go faster as we get older. And just a couple of weeks ago, it was Valentine's Day. You know, Valentine's Day is a day that we set aside to celebrate love. Some people think it's a Hallmark holiday, which it is. But, you know, it is a day that we do set aside to celebrate our love with people, our love of ourselves. And we we actually have two days in Northeast Ohio because we celebrate Sweetest Day. That's a Midwest thing. I can tell you, not a thing in Los Angeles, although, you know, I tried. I was trying to, like, make fetch happen out there (laughs) and get people on board on the Sweetest Day celebration because I love love. I love it so much. And so I think that we should talk about it beyond Valentine's Day. You know, maybe you started something new around Valentine's Day or maybe you're in a committed relationship that you've been in or you've recently, you know, decided to take a relationship to the next level. Regardless, We do have to work on our relationship. So that's something that we should maybe think about all year long. You know, I was watching The Bachelor because I recap it when there are Ohio people involved in the show. And there have been several Ohio people this current season with Clayton Eckert. And last night they had uh, couples therapy sessions. It was down to, you know, it's getting down to the final women competing for his love. And they had couples therapy sessions on national TV. I thought that was a little much for my taste. As someone who is a big proponent of therapy, I thought, ooh, that is a very, it's a very intimate thing to be putting on national television. But that's a type of work that we can do in our relationships, not one that I would want to do on national TV, not one that I would want to do, you know, publicly on a podcast or anything like that. But there are places to start. There are scientifically proven ways to strengthen our relationships and what the great thing about that is is when we strengthen our romantic relationships it actually helps us as individuals too so we've got a great guest to talk about that today she's a friend of the podcast it's dr Susan alber she's a psychologist with the cleveland clinic we've talked to her several times and she has five tips for us five things that we can do scientifically backed things that are proven to strengthen our relationships. So that's what we're chatting about with today. We've got Dr. Albers here waiting, so let's bring her in right now. Dr. Albers, welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, we have had some great conversations. You've joined us for our conversation on toxic positivity. You were a part of our panel on, you know, Zoom and how that's making all of us feel and filters and body image and positivity. And now we're talking about something, Something that is, it's near and dear to my heart, something I talk a lot about with a lot of my friends, are romantic relationships and keeping them strong and how that can really help us as individuals too. So before we dive into the nuts and bolts that I know you're going to give us, I just want to ask you, you know, we think about partnerships, we think about ourselves as individuals. How is it helpful to us as individual people to make sure that our romantic relationships are strong? Yeah. You're right. It's one of the most important things that we can do. Research indicates that a strong relationship helps to boost our happiness, our mood, decrease stress, and just make life more meaningful. But unfortunately, as we all know, relationships are complicated. They take a lot of work and they take some energy. We often acknowledge our relationship one day a year on Valentine's Day and the rest of the year, we kind of let it go by the wayside. So there are some things that we can do scientifically backed behaviors that can improve our relationships that are not very hard. I love that this is science backed, of course, you know, because we want to give people the best information possible. You know, we hear all the time, like you mentioned, relationships are work. It's different than clocking into your job, though. You know, you clock into your job, you have a set number of tasks you have to accomplish by the end of the day, you have a set goal. For people who are wondering, you know, Where do I start? Where do I start with this work? Is there a a simple thing that people can just kind of get started with every day? Yes. And don't get nervous if you hear the word work because you're you're right. (laughs) It can make it feel like it's going to take a lot of energy. But these tips that I have today are very easy. They're very simple. The first one that you can do is what is known as eight meaningful touches. So research indicates that giving eight meaningful touches a day 
can significantly boost your relationship. What's a, what is a meaningful touch? Basically, it is a pat on the hand, holding hands, your arm around someone, a pat on the back, just a touch to let them know that you are present. And touch is really significant. It makes us feel soothed, comforted, safe, and on a biological level, it releases the hormone oxytocin. And that is the hormone that makes us feel connected to people. So when you're doing that touch, you are also releasing hormones in your body and in their body as well that makes you feel connected. Mm, I can totally resonate with that. I am I'm a physical touch person. I love to be you know, very affectionate in my romantic situations. And also too, you know, thinking about that, even with friends, when you see a friend, you know, not everyone is a hugger, but if you are, for me, I just, it's just like an, ugh, like a happy, joyful feeling. And it doesn't have to necessarily always be, you know, like a super like loaded, super sexual scenario or touch like that. It doesn't have to be something that's like a grandiose PDA display, but there is something to be said, you know, for like a touch of the hand, especially, you know, if you're uh, if you're just feeling like you need that little mood boost. Exactly. And I think that's a good point is that it can be just something very simple and light and to be mindful of how the person receives the touch. Some people are hug people and some people are not. But the kind of touch that we're talking about is like a pat on the hand. And you can really gauge from there how much do they need and want and crave that touch. Very fascinating to me also that it's eight and that that's the number you know you think about these things all the time I think about this is not really related at all but it just makes me think about it you know when you think about how many times you need to hear something before it sinks in and maybe this is kind of in that vein as well how many times you kind of need that that touch before you're getting those positive benefits it, it's true and the good news about the eight is that you can count throughout the day or break it up you know throughout the day of you know, two in the morning, two in the afternoon, and then the rest in the evening. And so if you think about it in that terms, eight is not very much in terms of when you part from someone, when you greet them. There's this really interesting study that talks about the power of, of touch and connection. And it's based on monkeys. It's a very famous study. And there were two monkeys that the researchers created. One was a monkey that was cloth, terry cloth, and the other one was a wire monkey that had bottles or food. And when monkeys got scared, where did they go? They didn't go for the food. They went for the monkey that was the terry cloth because they wanted to be cuddled. And I always think about that study about the importance of touch that animals, people, friends, we all need touch to feel safe and comforted. Yeah, it's an intimate thing. It really is. Okay, I want to move on to another one of your tips. And this is, I, I want to stick with the numbers for a second because I think that's helpful. It gives us something to really ground in it. When we talk about positive versus negative experiences that we're having with our partners, you know, yes, it is very important if something kind of rubbed you the wrong way to speak up for sure. But I think maybe necessarily we don't always take note of the positive interactions that we have with our partners. There is what is known as the five to one ratio. And this is based on a very famous researcher named John Gottman, and he researched couples. He researched what made them work successful and what broke them apart. And he was able to predict within 93% accuracy, which is amazing, um, based on talking with couples of who would break up and who would stay together. And it was based on this five to one ratio, which he called the magic ratio. And basically what it, what it means is that for every negative interaction that you have, and we're all gonna have those interactions where we have a little conflict, that in as they were talking about these interactions, they would have five positives to counter it. So if, if there was a negative, countering it with five positives. And that's something that we can all do. So if you have a conflict throughout the day, just making sure that you intentionally come back with five positive. And this is going to help to balance out those negative interactions and make you sway to the positive side so that we forget and put less emphasis on the negative. Because when we have that one negative, it really stands out in our brain. So we need a lot of positives to overpower that and flood it. Sure. Now, uh, so I have heard of this five to one ratio before. And in thinking about this, I always sort of thought of it more as a reflective situation. I always found myself looking back on maybe a relationship that wasn't so great or that I wasn't so great in 
and thinking, did I have that five to one ratio? But I'm wondering now too, I always thought of it as an after the fact situation when you're in it, Mm -hmm. if you're conscious of it, does it have the same effect if you're actually moving towards making those five positive things happen? Yeah, we wanna be proactive, not reactive. It's helpful after the fact, but be proactive about being intentional of those five positives. And the, this leads right into our my next tip of intentional appreciation. So this researcher, John Gottman, continued to study couples, and he found additional information on this five to one ratio in terms of appreciation, that couples who expressed and felt appreciated were significantly more connected to their relationship, committed, and had a better uh, prediction of where the relationship would go. So what he recommended is each and every day, fill in this blank. What I appreciate about you is, and fill in the blank with something about their personality. You are a great dad. You are very kind. You are very giving. I appreciate that about you. And also, and this is a tough one often for couples, is appreciating the little things, the routine things that we do every day and that we're supposed to be doing, but we, we, at the heart of it, we do appreciate it. Those, so things like taking out the dishes or taking out the trash, doing the dishes, those little things saying thank you for them go a long way in building the investment bank in your relationship. Mm, yeah, that's just a good habit to get into, I think, too. Who doesn't want to hear that they're appreciated? Who doesn't <laughs> want to hear a thank you for something that can, you know, be sort of a thankless task that, you know, has to get done, but there's no rule that says any particular person has to do it. So, yeah, I mean, totally. And what often stands as the way, in the way of that, is that people feel like it should be a given. You do the dishes and that you don't need to thank you for it, but we just love to hear it. We love to hear and be acknowledged for doing those things. So today, if you do one thing, say to your partner, I appreciate about you and fill in the blank. Great, great. Okay, so when we're talking about being with our partners, you know, we can't be together all the time. And sometimes, you know, people see time apart as as a negativity. Life gets busy. You don't necessarily have the time that you wish that you had. But is there a way to turn that time apart into something that can be a positive to strengthen the relationship? We all need we versus me time. Those two are very distinct. And during the pandemic, many people really came to appreciate this when they were working at home together for the first time, learning the value of how much time that we often need apart. And research indicates that we need about 51 minutes a day or about six hours a week of our own time to invest in your own self-care, hobbies, unwinding, just time to regroup and recharge your batteries. We used to get it during the pandemic, driving home on commutes. Some people are back to work, but you know, oftentimes we are still at home and not getting some of that alone time. So one thing that we can do to make sure that we continue that strong relationship is to create what is rituals when you leave each other and you come back together. So welcome home rituals and goodbye rituals. And those can be things like a kiss or a hug, but also saying the same phrase when someone leaves or giving the same greeting, it creates routine and consistency. And you look forward to and acknowledge that you recognize that their their presence is missed and you will look forward to them returning. And what a great opportunity those moments are to get in some of those other things, like those eight touches. That's a great time to slide one in there with a little kiss goodbye. Yes, we and we all need to add some novel time to those relationships too. So that time alone gives you time to think about what other kinds of activities can we do together as a couple? Throwing some surprise and novelty into it, doing a new hobby, going to a new restaurant, finding something new that you can talk about. Because often you've been in a relationship for a long time and you've covered a lot of topics. So adding something new to discuss really adds a lot of good energy. Yes, when you get to learn something new about the person that you feel like you've known every single thing about, and also too in yourself, when you're learning something new about yourself, when you have that time apart to do those things, and then you can share that with that person. All right, we've talked to we've talked about physical touch, we've talked about you know appreciation and sharing praise. These are types of love languages. Uh, What about some of the other love languages? Talk to me about those. This is by far the number one thing that I recommend to 
everyone. If you have not already read The Five Love Languages, I highly recommend it. It's by Dr. Chapman. And it is a book that is helpful not only to romantic relationships, but relationships with your friends, your family members, your children. Because basically the concept of the book is that there are five love languages and that we all give and receive love in different ways. We feel loved in different ways. And there's five categories. So some we've already mentioned. So one is touch. Another is acts of service. So acts of service are things like going to get a cup of coffee or helping them with a, a chore that they don't like, doing something for them. Quality time. This is making sure that you give all of your attention to your significant other and doing things together that you enjoy. So going for a hike, having dinner together, doing an activity, a hobby, going to a movie, spending that quality time together. There is also words of appreciation. Now, if this sounds like you, you are someone who really appreciates kind words, kind of like we were saying about the appreciation. Mm -hmm. You would thrive and feel very loved by a social media post about you that is very loving or a handwritten card or some old photos put in a card and placed on your bed. Those words really speak to you. Another love language is gifts. So having something physical and tangible is often very helpful and makes you feel loved. A trick for this is if you don't know what your significant other wants, check out their Amazon cart. Mm. A lot of times you can look through their past history of what they bought or things that they want that they put on their wish list. And it's very helpful to know exactly what they are. Oh yeah, and you really hit the jackpot if they've put something in their cart that they've saved for later. Exactly. <laughs> you just grab that exactly. thing. <laughs> or other gifts that you've given them in the past that they have really, really liked or appreciated something useful. I, I know that can be a challenging one for people to figure out what is a tangible gift, but here's where we often go wrong. Oh, and then also touch. We covered touch. Touch is another love language that is, is very important to some people and not to others. So go through that list yourself and your partner and rank your love languages. So you know your own and you know theirs. Our biggest mistake in relationships is trying to use our own love language to love the other person. And it falls flat because theirs does not match ours. Sometimes it does, but often it doesn't. So we have to think about what their love language is. Sure. Yeah. So uh, actually, we did have Dr. Gary Chapman on one of the previous podcasts, and we talked all about the five love languages. So if you're listening or watching now, I recommend go back, check that one out. We really kind of got into the nitty gritty about them. But something that I want to uh, note here, I just I have to make this public service announcement. You mentioned the way that you give and receive love may be different than the other way, than the way your partner gives and receives love. It's like there are four categories here. I give love a certain way, I receive love a certain way. They give love a certain way, they receive love a certain way. And a lot of times I think we kind of get stuck in thinking of the love languages as a me-centric thing. And I do think it is really important to think about how that other person gives it and how that other person receives it. Because it could be four different ways in those different categories. Absolutely. And when you identify what your partner's love language is and you get it right and you nail it, you know it you know it because you can see their reaction that they really they really feel loved and you know that words in themselves can be powerful if they are if they are not a gift person don't bother spending any money figure out the right words to express how you how you feel about them yes oh what a beautiful thing when we can get that kind of communication synergy going on so many great tips here dr albers before we let you go i want to ask you if you have any final advice any parting words to people who are looking to strengthen those romantic relationships so i work with a lot of couples in my office and this is the number one thing that is problematic that we can all work on in our relationships and it is being on your phone mm. there is nothing that disconnects people more than being on the phone and research indicates that about 50% to 60% of people indicate that it's one of the number one things that bothers them in a relationship is too much time on the phone. The other person is distracted when they're talking or they're trying to connect or eating together. So I guess if there is one thing to do is when your partner is talking to you, make sure to put the phone down and aside just for that short period of time. 
um, because they will feel very loved and cared about. And you can hear what they say in a different way when you're not distracted by your screen. It's hard to do because we are on our phones all the time, but it is one of the number one significant relationship breakers. Mm, and just good for our lives in general as individuals. We talk about how strengthening a romantic relationship can help you as an individual. I'm just going to share one tip since we mentioned phone time here. I have one of those old timey sort of sand timer things and it's cute and it's like a cute decoration. It's a 30 minute timer. If I feel like I've been on my phone too much in a day, I turn that on and I'm like, you are not touching your phone until that sand is at the bottom of that hourglass, Stephanie Haney. <laughs> you are not doing it. it. Yes. It's been, you know it's been it's super helpful. You know, what's also an interesting exercise is to look at your phone. It will break down how much time you spend on your phone. Your phone is very smart and it knows you very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'll tell you how much time you're on social media, how much time you're looking things up, and in general, how much time it consumes from your day. So you can take a look at that and see how does that balance out with how much real time that you are giving to your relationship. Yeah, a whole kind of different FaceTime, not the kind on your phone. <laughs> Dr. Albers, thank you so much for these tips. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your time here on the Three Things to Know podcast. Thank you so much. You know, one of the reasons that I love doing this podcast so much is because I love learning. I love being a student of life. And I had seen different versions of this information that we talked about with Dr. Albers today. But one thing that was very new to me was the idea of eight meaningful touches a day. And I love the way it's quantified into that number. That's that's achievable, right? And we know, based on scientific research, according to Dr. Albers, that that will have a, a lasting impact in strengthening our relationships. And I love the way we were focusing on being proactive and not reactive. Again, you know, as I told Dr. Albers, there have been many failed relationships of mine when I've looked back and thought, as I told her, did I have that five to one ratio? It doesn't have to be like that. We can exist in the moment, you guys. We can live in the moment and we can say, mm, I'm feeling like that five to one ratio is a little off. Let's, let's get some more of the positive vibes going. Let's make an effort, make that happen. So hopefully you found some tools here that you might find useful. Uh, if you implement any of these, if you do it in any like unique or interesting ways, let me know. I would love to hear about it. I wanna hear how this information is being taken and applied out there in real life out in the real world what's a fun way that you found to get another physical touch in with somebody you know is, is it a high five is it is it a pat on the head <laughs> whatever it is let me know I would love to hear about it now let's talk about what you need to know in NEO you know we're talking about strengthening our relationships one of those as I just mentioned those eight meaningful touches but also having the me time and the we time and Dr. Albers mentioned new hobbies, things like that. So I want to talk about something because, you know, it is, it's still chilly here in Ohio. It's not quite warm yet. And here in the area in Northeast Ohio, we have all these great pop-up ice skating rinks, right? But they go away after the holiday season. They go away in like January. You know, there's Riverfest in the flats. That went away in January. Also, the Public Square and Crocker Park ice skating rinks. They go away as the holiday season ends. But if you would like to do some ice skating, potentially, all year long, you can do that in Lakewood. It's called Serpentini Winterhurst Arena. It's also the home to the Winterhurst Figure Skating Club, which you, if you remember, we talked about that previously with 1960 Olympic gold medalist Carol Heiss Jenkins. That's where she did some coaching. She says she goes there sometimes too. So it's on Lakewood Heights Boulevard. It's right at Warren Road. So that's right at that 90 on-ramp in that area. And they have an open skate. If you want to go to it, you do have to register online, but they have open skating hours during the weekdays. Seems like it seem, tends to be during the day, but they also have weekend hours in the afternoon. It's 10 bucks if you have your own ice skates, and it's 14 bucks if you don't. You can go and uh, try something new. Try something new with your partner. Maybe it's something that they're into. Maybe it's something that you're into. Maybe it's something that neither of you have ever thought about. Just a suggestion, but if you'd like to try that out and you're bummed that you're, you're missing out on that holiday ice skating, those pop-up ice skating rinks, the Serpentini Winterhurst Arena is open all year long, so you can check that out. And this week, for a good follow, if you are looking for things to do, if you're looking for date ideas, ways to connect with your special someone, I recommend that you follow our very own 3 News, Kiara Cotton, because... She knows what's up, you guys. She knows what's going on around town. She does this great segment on Front Row Friday. That's our 7 p.m. show on Fridays, and it's called Three Things Poppin'. 
and it's three things that are going on in the area to get you out get you out there safely you know we're still we are still concerned about the safety of things as we try and figure out the world right now with trying to stay well and you know all of that stuff but she she shares three things that are going on every single week so if you're uh, wanting for some ideas you know by the end of the week my brain is fried and I don't necessarily want to think about what could be going on or search for something fun to do Kiera has you covered so you can find her on Instagram it's Kiera Cotton key uh, key is what we call her k-i-e-r-r-a cotton c-o-t-t-o-n underscore that's on Instagram and then on Twitter you can find Kiera at k-i-e-r-r-a c-o-t-t-o-n Kiera Cotton simple as that and that is it for your three things to know podcast this week my friends I hope you learned some valuable information Send me a DM. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you would like to hear about for future episodes. Let me know if there's something on your radar that we need to know in NEO. And if there's someone that you are really enjoying following on social media, if they've got a Northeast Ohio tie, we love that. Don't necessarily have to, but that's kind of our vibe here. That's what we try. We try and highlight. But again, the internet is a beautiful place and it brings us together. So not necessarily a requirement there. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please leave a rating and a review. If you're listening on a podcast platform, leave me a comment. If you're listening on YouTube, a comment and a share. If you're listening on Instagram, like the video, all that good stuff and share it with your friends so that we can connect with more people here in Northeast Ohio. We can broaden that circle, enlarge our community, Find out more about what we need to know in NEO, what people are interested in talking about, and who is a good follow on social media. That's it for this week, my friends. I will see you back next week with more Three Things to Know. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.